The Dallas Mavericks get a huge game one win. Nick Angstead and Isaac Harris here at Locked On Mavs. Getting into it. All of it. What it do, baby? Mavs take game one. It's the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. Hey, hey, I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Let's go! Let's go, baby! And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and coordinator for the Locked On Podcast Network. And joining me, as always, co-host contributor at Mavs.com. The traveling tornado, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? This whole freaking week, Whew. we've been saying Mavs in six, but the Mavs are taking game one. They took game one, baby. They you, took it. You, my friend, called game one. You've been calling that for a week, a solid week. You're saying Mavericks will win game one. And here we are. Here we are. Game one win. Paul Just Rudd like meme. That. Let's go. Who would have So thought? excited. Look at us. This team from the opening tip, the main reason why, if you've been listening to this podcast, main reason why I've been so stuck on this prediction of them winning game one is just the whole past since last off season that build up the revenge the we want we're gonna play these guys dorian had a great quote the other day saying if they tank these last two games to play us we want them just as bad and it's like they they wanted this they wanted this this game and it's like hey there's no way they're not gonna match that energy and that effort and they went out there and they they did that man they so excited. Did that thing. On today's show, we'll break down the Dallas Mavericks 113 to 103 win over the Clippers. It ended a 10 point win. Like that doesn't seem like it. Mm. It seems like it was so close down the stretch, but Mavericks got the win. They are up game. They're up one game in the series, winning game one. The team that wins game one, Isaac, like a 70% chance of winning the series. Oh, y'all not ready for that. Y'all not ready for that post game pod if they, they win this series. You are not ready for that. Like, like what we just did at the beginning of this one will just be on a, a completely another level. Uh, absolutely. So, so much stuff to break down. This is our post-game pod. Uh, we, will, we will have another pod for Monday, so this is not the Monday pod. Uh, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, what up? Let's go. What up? <laughs> like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> if you're not watching on YouTube, you can watch this ep this podcast on YouTube five days a week. By the way, Nick Gang said, Isaac Harris, we've been covering the Dallas Mavericks for five or six years now for various outlets. Isaac from Mavs.com, from Fansided, me from uh, SB Nation, from you know Mavs Fanatic, all kinds of different stuff we've been covering, obviously with Locked On now. Going into our fifth year, in about 10 days, we'll start our fifth year with Locked On. So we've been doing this for a while, been in locker rooms, talking to everybody, and now... We've been covering this team. Every single game we've been covering and watching this team, the ups and downs. Uh, there was a there was a stat that was posted before the game even started that I tweeted out that a lot of people were starting to latch on to and mm. looking at it and saying, oh, Mav's going to win this series because of this stat. Record versus playoff teams. This is, bef this is in the regular season this season. Number one, Phoenix Suns. Number two, Utah Jazz. Number three, Brooklyn Nets. Number four, your Dallas Mavericks, 22 Let's and 15. Go. Number seven, LA Clippers, 20 and 17. So the Mavericks had a little bit better record against playoff teams. So a lot of people were thinking that. Uh, but let's just start from opening tip, the starters. Luka Doncic, Kristaps Porzingis, Dorian Finney-Smith, Tim Hardaway Jr. getting the start over Josh Richardson. A lot of people speculated that. And then Maxi was able to play, which was great. I thought that he, he played decently well, even though... <sighs> We have to say goodbye. To oh, Maxi Kleba, he was. But I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take that angle that anyone pro player takes the angle on. At least he contested. Time of death, least, <laughs> five p.m. Central at least he time. jumped. <laughs> Except you can't jump to contest the three when you're jumping sideways. But you know what, Max, he got postered, and it's like those three guys yelled at him. But you know what? He got to walk. He got to walk off that <laughs> off that court today with a win. So he did. You'll take it. you'll take the win if you're gonna get posterized in one of the most like 
incredible ways ever. Kawhi, an insane dunk. But uh, on the Clippers side, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Marcus Morris. Uh, yeah, Marcus Morris. And then uh, Ibiza, Ibiza Zubats. And then Patrick Beverly gets the start. By the way, let's start here. Gets the start on Luka. Luka crossed <laughs> two easy fouls on him. And... Please. I, I don't know who's saying this. If if our Ella, if our locked on Clippers hosts are saying this, they sure didn't say it on our crossover. But Patrick Beverly cannot guard Luca. That's not an option. No, I mean I hope he does. Please, I know. Actually, listen, Pat Beverly can't. I mean, the best defender they have to throw at Luca. They should throw Pat Beverly at him all the time. <laughs> this is the reverse psychology. Hopefully, Ty <laughs> Lue's listening. Let's do this. I just think it's hilarious because Bev gets out there and he has all this energy and. You know, ah, he's going to get and, like, things. and Luke is like, bro, I don't care. You're like a fly on me. I'm going <laughs> to. And, and then, then he was just to, gone. They tried it again in the third quarter and Luca immediately posted him up and took him right to the, you know, the block. And then a double comes and all that, by the way, a couple people out there in, in the Twitter verse, you know, Matt Moore, um, Nikai's Duncan, like a lot of people that, that cover basketball full time. were like, these Clippers don't have a single answer for Luca. Like they've tried, they and, tried and they're the team. They're the definition of the team to stop Luca. Like that's the thing. It's like Kawhi, Paul George, all these guys. They are the definition of like the people you would want on paper. And Luca still does this. They tried everything in this game. They tried trapping. They tried uh, double teaming him full court. They tried double teaming him in the half court. They tried a uh, a delayed trap, right? Where like they wait yeah. for a second when Luca has the ball and then Patrick Beverly would come running up as soon as a coach tell him to go. They tried so many different things. And the one that actually kind of worked was the, the, the immediate double, which then Luca had to get the ball out of his hands. But it's like the Steph Curry treatment, right? One, one Luca only had one point in the fourth quarter couple of assists there. The Mavericks still won the quarter, right? Like, yeah. like that's how they're going to win the game is that these other guys step up. So just absolutely insane that Luca, I mean, he, what did he finish with the game with 31 points, 10 rebounds, 11 assists. The big one that stood out to me, three turnovers, three yeah. for Luca who handled the ball that much, played 40 minutes, shot five, 11 from three, 11 to 24 from the field. He, he missed three free throws, which you'll be upset about later, but, Man, it's just an immaculate game from him. Like, immaculate. The, you know, for them, one of the bigger stories of the game was Zubats. You know, it, yeah. just the shift on that. You know, from the very beginning, they played the switch. And you're like, all right, Ty Lu. If I was a Clippers fan, I would be going nuts because they just kept on switching with Luka. And Luka, I mean, to my understanding, they're kind of friends. Him, It's like, bro, you're just doing your friend dirty at this point because <laughs> – I mean, he was just torching him, and I just kept waiting. I'm like, all right, where's your adjustment, Ty Lu? When are you going to do it? And I think he just waited too late. You know, he did it in the second half. He didn't even put him out there. It's like we didn't even see him to close the fourth quarter. But, I mean, Luca was just taking advantage of it all night. And the, the step backs he was doing on, on him from the corner at the top of the key, the in the paint leaners, the one-legged fade, the whole arsenal was out for Luca tonight. And that's the thing. It's like you <laughs> – it's wild that this whole, you know, we're talking about Luca because he had a 30 point triple double. But in a game to where if you would have told me Luca didn't have 40 and KP had under 15 points, I would say the percentage of you winning that game is just not yeah. the highest. And I think you could almost make the argument that the supporting cast is the story of this game. Oh, absolutely. And it's because the Clippers did try to trap Luca and double Luca and did all these things. And these other guys had to beat him and they did. Uh, back to your point about Zeus. So, in the beginning of the third quarter, they start the both teams started their starters again, and then Luca kept getting the switch on Zubac. He scored five straight points on him uh, at the beginning, and then Zubac uh, <laughs> like uh, checked out with seven minutes and twenty one seconds left in the third quarter. We never saw him again in the game, and he's huh. the guy that would kill the Mavericks right on the on the rolls yeah. and on the, on the rebounding and all that kind of stuff, and they just couldn't play him. And Luca is Luca does that man like he just plays guys off the court if you just can't stick with him, and so that happened again. So. So much stuff to get to. We'll talk about the role players because they were big. We'll talk about the Clippers side of things. We'll get into a little bit more Luca. Got to talk about Chris Alex Porzingis too. Get into all that. But before we do, let's talk a couple of things with you. Headspace. Wouldn't it be great if there's a pocket-sized guide that help you sleep, focus, act, and be better? Interesting they put act in there. What kind of – do you think it's dramatic acting or do you think it's hmm. just like you got to learn how to act? 
Headspace, daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditation is an easy to use app. Headspace is one of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. They have everything that you need. If you're feeling overwhelmed, Headspace has a three minute SOS meditation directly made for you. Headspace's approach to mindfulness can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash NBA. That's headspace.com slash NBA for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. That's the best deal offered right now. Go to headspace.com slash NBA today. Also want to tell you about Built Bar. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. They are absolutely delicious, and I have one almost every day. I ordered a new box recently, mint brownie, raspberry, and the cherry barcia. Those are my three go-tos, like the solid ones that they always have. If they have the coconut brownie chunk ones, you get it right away. You don't wait. Oh, no doubt. You cannot wait because they they sell out immediately. So get those if you can. Check BuiltBar.com. They're always adding new flavors. The birthday cake one is really interesting. It comes with sprinkles. Got to love that. And it's low in sugar, high in protein, uh, low in calories, all that. You get it at BuiltBar.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your next box. Every single order you want, LOCKED15. Use that promo code 15% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into uh, this game, man. Like, There's so many things that we could break down from this game, but we probably could for a whole week if we wanted to. Uh, the sure. way. The way that they guarded Luka, the way that the Mavericks had to, to come out and guard uh, the others. What did you think about the start of the game? Maxi on Kawhi, Dorian on Paul George. That's sort of the way we expected. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. getting the start, and then Josh Richardson coming off the bench. Honestly, I didn't have an expectation for the starting unit. I just I didn't know. I mean, they could yeah. have started Josh today to guard Paul George because you had some incredible Paul George stuff in regards to Josh Richardson guarding him. And... You know, you talked about it on yesterday's pod, right? I did, yeah. Okay, we we texted about it, and well, so I, I, for for people that didn't listen, uh, Law Murray from the from the Athletic had a great stat that Paul George has been fined two times since since 2019, and both times were after games he was guarded by Josh Richardson, <laughs> both in one in Philadelphia and then one in Dallas. Absolutely wild. Yeah, so if they started him, I wouldn't have been shocked, but they went yeah. with Tim, you know, and Tim's been playing really well, and they put Maxi in there, you know, like you just said, and, you know, this is Maxi's, you know, he's still getting back in the groove, you know, from the Achilles soreness and all of that. So, you know, talking about coming back, say come back and uh, guard Kawhi Leonard in a playoff series and putting, putting Dorian on Paul George. But I thought some of the first subs were very interesting too. You know, it was yeah, Willie too. and Jalen Brunson. And, you know, that was the only time we saw Willie for the most part. Willie struggled. He really well, did struggle. Well, they did. Best. They tried what they tried when they brought in another big. They tried Willie in the first half and Dwight in the second half. And that one shift that they were going to add like a big man, they decided to go that route. And I thought that was really interesting. I wonder if they had planned that before. Like, all right, let's try Willie in the first half and Dwight in the second half. Or if they just noticed that Willie was really struggling. And so let's just yeah. put Dwight in there. Yeah, I thought Willie struggled. They brought Brunson in. I think the su most surprising while we're talking just rotation, if you Nico Melli, I mean, I thought he was going to be like a DMPCD in this from? series. Played almost ten minutes in this game, or a little over nine minutes in this game. I mean, I thought if you would have told me Nico Melli played more than Dwight Powell in Game One, <laughs> I would have been shocked in that. So, and honestly, I didn't think he like he didn't do too bad. Like he actually fought some for some rebounds, and I thought he defended quite well too. But yeah, I, I thought some of those rotation things were interesting. You know, we we were texting during the game. I'm like, uh, Luca might have to average 40 minutes a game in this series for he will. you know them for them to have a chance. And he played right over 40 minutes in this. And if it was up to Luca, he would play a little bit more because <laughs> I thought Richard Jefferson was. Are you pro Richard Jeff yeah, Jefferson? Yeah, I, love, I love Richard Jefferson. I think he's the best color commentator that the NBA has. Okay. I don't know Who's, if that's just like the the bar is set. The bar low, is very so the bar could, is very low. Let's be real. Yeah, <laughs> because he's. I thought he struggled sometimes. It, some pronunciation things. He was struggling. Uh, he kept on saying Luca's second year. I'm like, mm, it's not his second year, bro. And he was a little bit too pro clippery for me at times. And I was kind of. I like him. Yeah, I like his personality, but but uh, but yeah, his Rondo deflection was incredible. <laughs> uh, even though I wanted him to go into it, but him uh, dropping the, Hey, I was on that team with Rondo and it was just some, <laughs> some leadership opportunities for him to learn and grow. And <laughs> all right. Thank you, RJ. But, uh, but no, 
I thought some of the rotations were interesting, but this is one of my favorite part of the playoffs. I want to see how teams adjust. I want to see who actually plays, who finishes games. And I'll be really curious to see how Ty Lue changes his rotation. And will he go back to Zoo and say, all right, we got to do this? Will he adjust in game two? Will he play? I thought Rondo should have played more than what he did. You know, know. having – I thought Rondo should play (laughs) more than, you know, Reggie Jackson and uh, Pat Beverly, but – I don't give a crap about Rondo either. So the, the thing is with with Rondo, like he made three threes, he had four assists, and he played some pretty good defense. But if you play him more than his twenty four minutes that he played, can he give you that same production? Right? Are the legs still going to hold yeah. up in all that? And you sure. hope it, for on the math side, you hope it doesn't. Right? Like play him as much as much as you want. Also, I think he he does games. He has games like this in spurts. Plus, he was a minus eight in the minutes he played. So it's not like the Clippers were dominating while, while he was out there. Yeah. Can we, can we go ahead and have the KP conversation? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I mean, a little, little worried about him <laughs> through majority of the game. I thought he'd let, you know, he, he definitely struggled. I will say, I will take up for him in this. Uh, he did get fouled m- multiple times. Yes. Like he, he yes. got legitimately fouled and it should have been called, but I thought it let, he let it get to his head a little too much. And it, it it felt like it took him out of the game. It felt like I saw his like soul leave his body like in yes. Space Jam. 100%. And it's like, all right, somebody stole his soul during this game and his talents. And, you know, he finished well and he had a couple moments towards the end of the game. But he's got to he's got to stay in the game whenever it's not working like he wants it to work. He has to find other ways to impact the game. And I'll be curious to see if he adjusts, not just the Ty Lue thing. I think for for Dallas, I think one of the biggest adjustments is how will KP adjust in game two? This is huge. Chris Osborzingis, we've been monitoring it for all year, basically. He has not figured out what his space and what his place is in the offense. He has been so vocal about, well, where do, where am I going to get my shots? Where does it come from? I want to be involved. I want to be more involved. I want to you know be in the offense or lead the offense. Remember that whole conversation? Like We've been, yeah. we've been monitoring this all season and it's been more true in the last couple of weeks than it was even when he first came back that he wanted to know where his offense was going to come from and then even in today's game the Mavericks get a win good team win he does not play well and the first thing he's asked is you know yeah you struggled in this game what do you think about you know the team win first thing he mentions is yeah I just was I you know the, the times when I wasn't involved in the offense blah 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 starts talking about his role in the offense and all that kind of stuff he is so like worried about that. And then all of a sudden, then when he gets the ball, he gets fouled a couple of times, doesn't get the call. And then it's in his head. And then all of a sudden he's just not playing the game anymore. He's too worried about where it's going to fit and what's going to happen. And just go out there and play basketball, which is, I think the huge difference between Luca and KP they're like Shaq and Kobe in the sense that they're so diametrically different in the way that they think about the game. And the way that they, yeah. they can like to conduct themselves. And Shaq and Kobe was more about the preparation of the game than it was actually playing the game. But Luca and Porzingis, it's about how they play. Luca goes out there and he's like, wreck ball, I can play wherever and whoever and whatever, like doesn't matter, right? Porzingis is like, I want a game plan, I want to go out there. He's the guy in your you know, group project in school that comes prepared, that wants to know beforehand so he can prep. And Luca's the guy that's like, Let's just meet 3 p.m. somewhere and we'll just make it happen. You know, like yeah. he's he's the one that's kind of like free flowing in that way. And I thought it really, like you said, took him out of the game. He was really out of this. He finished with 14 points, four of 13 from the field, one of five from three, five of six free throws. And two of those free throws were absolutely massive in the clutch for the Mavericks. So that was really big, big. time. The dunk four, was big time. I feel like sometimes we see KP kind of go up from things like that. It's like a contested lean, try to get yeah. a foul, he lay it up game. type thing. It's like, Dunk at home, bro. You're seven three, and he did that. Like I thought, he finished well. Did you get worried in the second quarter? Because I felt like the team was kind of melting down. Luca was getting pissed. KP was very frustrated. Brad Townsend was in the house, and he was tweeting different things from Staples and how KP was barking at Brunson at the bench and how Luca was mad. And he was like, they, he even said in one of his tweets, "There, it feels like they're losing their composure." I got legitimately worried in the second. I'm like, don't do this. Don't do this right now. But you know they. Yeah, they turned the ship around. They turned the ship around, right? Like you said, in the, in the second quarter, they were tied. So the, the Mavericks, we should walk through the game a little bit here. The Mavericks went up pretty early, like 17 to 6. It was 22 to 10. That was the largest lead of the of the, the first quarter there. Uh, and so the Mavericks came out like 
firing on all cylinders. And the Clippers have have this whole season. We talked to the Lockdown Clippers guys about this. In these brunch games that they call them because they start at 1.30 Pacific time. Like in these brunch games, they have been really bad. They've been bad in some of these games that start a little early. And so the Mavericks came out of the gate swinging. They started Tim Hardaway Jr., which is something we've been watching all season. If they're going to start him and get some offense going at the beginning, and they did, got that going. And then, you know, from that point in the first quarter – all the way to seven minutes and five seconds left in the second quarter. It was 40 to 40 and it was tied. And the Mavericks were, that's when they started to kind of fall apart. Clippers started to take a lead there. And then the Mavericks sort of took it back from them. And I think it just took a little bit of a run there at the end. They got a little bit of a yeah. Luca just kind of dominating Luca taking, you know, like two, three minutes and be like, I'm going to dominate this whole stretch and I'm going to score, or I'm going to dish out and get some of these assists. Luca had just some wild, wild, absolute passes. Um, in oh, this yeah. game, the, Pat the, Bev, one, the look off for Pat Bev in the corner. Four minutes and 30 seconds left. Luca drives in the lane. Kawhi's on him. And Tim Hardaway Jr. is in the corner. Dorian Finney Smith is on the left wing, the Saint, that Saint, the strong side wing. And Patrick Beverly's guarding Tim Hardaway Jr. in the corner. Luca drives on <laughs> Kawhi, gets into the paint, and then stops, jumps in the air, looks at Dorian to his left, and then throws the ball to, to Tim Hardaway. And Patrick Beverly falls for it in just. Like the most like remarkable fashion, and just completely he turns up his, foul just for that. Just turns his hips and his body and goes directly towards Dorian. And then by the time he chops back and goes back to Tim Hardaway, it was too late. And it was just an incredible pass from Luca. And so it took a little bit of a run like that for the Mavs to get in it. Coming up, let's get into coming up. Let's get into some more from the role players. Let, let's talk about the role players yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, unless there's more about Porzingis, about no. w- where he goes in game two. I, I want to like talk we'll, about positives, yeah. I feel like we'll do that on Monday, where, where Porzingis can go. So we'll get into that coming up. But before we do, let's talk about Indeed.com. If you're the hiring expert for your company, what you really need is help making your short list of candidates easier. You have so many people that apply for a job. So many people want jobs right now. You need to be able to condense that into a shorter list to be able to know which ones are qualified and which ones are the best candidates. Indeed helps you do that so easy. Get your qualified list of sh- of sh- of candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description faster. Only pay for the candidates that meet your must-have qualifications. You can put that in there and schedule complete video interviews in your Indeed dashboard. Get started right now with a free $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post on Indeed.com slash locked. Get a $75 credit at Indeed.com slash locked. Indeed.com slash locked. Offer valid through June 30th. Terms and conditions will apply. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into the rest of this game. Guys stepped up, man. Like the Mavericks Mm. shot 47% from three, 17 of 36 from three. Just like a crazy number. Luka was five of 11. We mentioned Porzingis, one of five. So that means the other role players stepped up. Dorian, four of five. Tim Hardaway Jr., five of nine. Uh, Maxi was one of two. Josh Richardson hit a three that was pretty big. Carlisle mentioned it after the game. And those guys really stepped up in big ways. Brunson didn't hit a three, but was still huge in this game. And I, and I want to say even on the opposite end of the floor too, they held the Clippers to 25 or less points in three quarters. Second quarter, 25 points. Third quarter, 25 points. Fourth quarter, 23 points for the Clippers. That's massive for this team. This team has struggled so much defensively this season. And they went into training camp talking about it. They still struggled throughout the season. And to hold the Clippers to just 103 points and 25 or less in three of those quarters, massive now i will say the clippers missed a ton of open threes <laughs> now i don't i don't i hope that stays the same it probably won't because they're one, the best three-point shooting team in the league but dallas there were so many times that they should have hit an open three especially in the first half and they just didn't make it so that will probably correct itself a little bit so but still i just want to brag on them on that but to see i'm just going to say door and finney smith out of all the other ones <laughs> we I will ride or die for this guy. I absolutely <laughs> love this guy. He's one of the best dudes ever. And just, I mean, I feel like we've bragged on him a lot this season, but for his three point percentage in particular, just to go up to where it's where it started when he first came in as an undrafted guy up to 39, 40% what it is now for him to hit those threes tonight, play that defense, go off the dribble a few times. And one of the most underrated moments of tonight's of the game for Dorian tonight, Clutch moment, few minutes to go, close game, fourth quarter. He brings up the ball against Paul George. And I know that sounds so dumb, 
But for Dorian to bring up the ball of the complete like length of the court to bring that because they were face guarding Luca against Paul George, that is something that doesn't happen in rookie season Dorian Penny Smith. So no. I, I can't praise him enough. I can't be happy enough for him. And for him to look at the bench in the front front row and to talk his crap, I'm like talk your stuff, Dorian. I absolutely love it. He's been incredible. Carlisle mentioned him after the game specifically and said, you know, he won't get a lot of love for most improved because it didn't happen year over year, but he should, right? Like he should yeah. get some most improved because from when he came in into this, into the, his, his career to now has been incredible. The, the, the jump that he's taken from yeah. decent defensive player to, you know, and, and like, nothing offensive player like literally nothing right like he was, yeah he was literally he could have had another three at the end of the game luca airballed that three and so and it's luca it's like hey take your shot it's no big deal but he could have swung it to dorian right at the top of the key could have made another three it's just he proved and i think the biggest thing is the biggest stage in a win in the playoffs dorian proved he belongs and that's that's one of the biggest things for dallas is he proved he can be on that stage and that's incredible do we? When do we start doing the? Well, dang, we were wrong about the Mavs needing a, a upgrade at that three and D spot, right? Like that was one of our big yeah. things that we said we were talking about. How do the Mavericks upgrade this roster? It was secondary creator, it was backup center, and then it was three and D. And is Dorian just the upgrade, right? Like he's, if he's just gonna get better and hit shots like this, then maybe the Mavs don't need to do that as bad. Yeah, well, it's it's one of those spots. Like moving forward, is like can you? Yeah. Dorian or Maxi, it's like that that Maxi spot of like, are you comfortable with do just having Dorian out there as your only primary defender against some of these the best guys in the league, the LeBrons, Kawhi's, all these people? And that's the thing. It's like you need you kind of need two of those guys out there. And if Josh isn't out there, then it's Dorian and Maxi. And you know, Maxi's trying his best out there. It's, he's not horrible, but it's it's still Kawhi. So, and I think it's important. We, I know we we've turned the page on Porzingis. But Rick Carlisle made a point after the game in his opening speech monologue thing to say <laughs> about how patient of a game KP had. And he reminded everyone of saying he has a top five player in the world that's guarding him in Kawhi Leonard. We knew that was, he, that happened last series. We knew going into this series Kawhi was going to guard KP. And that's that's huge. Like, K, I mean, Kawhi, when he's like fourth quarter and the game's on the line. How many other players are you picking outside of Kawhi that you want defensively? I'm still picking Kawhi over everybody in the league. Ben Simmons, whoever. I'm still picking Kawhi. There were times, though, where KP was getting guarded by, like, Patrick Beverly, you know, or Batum oh, yeah. or somebody oh, like and that. And Batum and stuff like that. And, he, and those yeah, are the times still, when, like, he yeah. take, when he has to take advantage, and, and we'll talk more about that on Monday. But, yeah, uh, I want to talk about Kawhi a little bit because I thought Maxi did – a decent job again, right? Like he did as best he could on Kawhi. Yeah. He got destroyed on that one dunk and then Kawhi was hitting some jumpers, but Kawhi Leonard, nine of 22 from the field, one of six from three, just 26 points in the game. Like did not finish. Yeah. His, I'm going to look up his second half numbers, four of 12 from the field from him and O of four from three. And he missed those two free throws that were absolutely huge. He only had nine points. He was a minus 10 in the second half. Uh, if you take that to just the fourth quarter, Kawhi was one of four, missed that one free throw, and then just had three points, minus nine in the fourth quarter. Like that, right there. It looked, like, it looked like a player in a team that's been uh, resting their players for a week or so trying to tank some games. And what the Mavericks did was they started trapping Kawhi. The same treatment that the, the Clippers were giving Luka, they gave to Kawhi. And it didn't work as well because Kawhi is not th that good of a playmaker compared to Luka. Uh, he's just yeah. not that same level. And then getting the thing is about Luca and the traps is I can't remember who made this point, but it's not about it's not about Luca getting the ball out of his hands to somebody else. It's what happens after that. And can Luca get back into the play, which Luca does a lot? He'll he'll get trapped. He'll throw the ball to Tim Hardaway, and then he'll go around like an off ball screen or something, come back around and get the ball again, and then be switched on somebody, right? Like, then and, and it all just gets messed up from there. So can he get back into the game? And I don't think Kawhi has done that as well so far because he doesn't get trapped as often they probably haven't run that yeah. as much but the mavericks changed that game plan on him and it really affected him because then the rest of the team just look in the fourth quarter the only guy hitting shots was paul george <laughs> four of seven in the fourth quarter nobody else hit more than one shot in the fourth quarter for the clippers and nobody scored more than five points paul george had 10 
Uh, Rondo was the wow. one that had five points, and two of them came on the free throw line. He missed two free throws. Marcus Morris hit those, missed those two free throws. Kawhi missed that free throw. So they missed. I mean, they were perfect from the line until the end there. Uh, yeah. The Mavericks, the Mavericks got a great, good. great free throw shooting team too. We talked about that leading up right. to the game. All right, and I, I want to, I do want to brag on Brunson. I thought yeah, he had a, he had two two and one drives. One of them on Paul George. Both both of them might have been on Paul George. I think so. And one drives. Thought they were great towards the end of the game. <laughs> hit some hit some good free throws at the those end of the game. Two, those two and one drives. I want to bring those up because I thought they were massive. Eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, and then the Mavericks had a lead, but the Clippers were kind of inching back onto it. The Mavericks lead at one point was uh, 87, 83, so it was like a five point lead, and the Clippers were were down by one, and then all of a sudden. Brunson gets these two and one drives in a row and just changes the momentum for Ma- for the Mavericks a little bit. It was just so big because they couldn't find anything. Those any kind of plays without Luca were just tough in this game. Like just tough to yeah. find some offense. Tough if Luca didn't touch the ball or if Luca wasn't on the floor, it was hard to find stuff and get stuff going. And Brunson in those two plays in a row proved that somebody else besides Luca could kill could beat the the Clippers. And he yeah. did. It kind of turned it around there, and then the Mavericks went on a little bit of a run. Uh, man, that was huge. Big time. Hit some big free throws. I thought and Tim Hardaway had some big moments. I'm going. I'm, I'm reversing back. One more thing. Go for it. <laughs> One more thing. It was Brunson's first playoff game. This is his first yeah. playoff game he's ever played, and so he got that under his belt. He came out there. He needs to play more, I think, in the next game. Twenty minutes. Yeah. I don't know if it's enough, but he was out there in closing, like we met, like we mentioned. He's been so closing matters. games for the Mavericks. That's not something that's new, and so he was out there, hit those free throws, got those and ones. Uh, if he would have hit that other free throw in that second and one, he would have been eight of eight from the free throw line. That would have been massive. But yeah, I thought that he was he was great in this game. I thought he was huge. I thought Tim Hardaway w- was big time. I mean, Tim, yep. in a way, it's like. Who are you more comfortable going into a game with right now as far as your second, you know, leading scorer? I think I'm more comfortable in t- with Tim Hardaway than KP right now. And it's just for him to step up like he has. He had 21 second leading scorer today, hit a huge three in Kawhi's face in the fourth quarter. Like yeah. it was one of those shots, like, whoa. And then it goes in, like, all right, cool. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do this. I want to ask you this question at the end here Best wins since 2011. Ooh. Vince Carter shot. Vince Carter shot. Luca buzzer beater. Which one? Last year <laughs> in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, last year, and yeah. this one's the third, right? Well, they haven't they haven't won a playoff series since since eleven, right? I know, but it's just like just great wins, exciting wins, like the best wins. This is a top three win in the last ten years, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Game one, I think it especially, is. especially game one. Uh, game yeah. one, just it was a, a exciting game. Just in it, I think it just showed everyone that hey, they're here. Like this is going to be a series. This is going to be fun. And man, it, it's going to be a dog fight. And I'm I'm super excited. I'm super excited because they won. I'm also super excited because I'm about to spend the next few days in Nashville with my wife without the kids. So in the, in the dark, go. apparently. Let's go. Um. But yeah, are you in the club right now? Is that why it's in so the dark there? Um, maybe. <laughs> um, I don't know. By the Mavs way, Brad, won. I'm about to win. Brad, <laughs> Brad Townsend tweeted out: Teams that win Game One of a seven game series in NBA history have gone on to win the series 76.2 percent of the time. Ooh, it's a high percentage. The other thing, I don't is, want to jinx anything though. The other thing is the last two. NBA champions lost game one of the, of the playoffs Lakers and Raptors. Why do you have to down the whole, I, I just, no, you even it out, right? Like it's the, okay. It's okay. the, uh, the, the office thing where you're like, or it's the parks and rec thing where you're like, let me tell you something awesome. And then something terrible to even you out. Right. Like, <laughs> like imagine soft bunnies, snails coming out of your mouth, right? Like it evens you out something off awesome. and something terrible. <laughs> so interesting stuff. This, was a great win. Absolutely great win. Jo- can we give a shout out to Josh Richardson real quick? Like he comes off the bench and we mentioned, yes, I mentioned yesterday how he took that in stride. You know, he was obviously upset about it, but he's taking it in stride, wanting yeah. to do the best for the team. And I thought he had some pretty big offensive possessions. Uh, he had eight points, three rebounds. He hit that one three that was pretty big. He played some pretty decent defense. Uh, he's viable. And he, I think he's way better coming off the bench. He can do some of that offensive stuff he wants to do, the little pull ups, the, you know, his drives aren't as, 
scrutinized defensively if he's playing against second units. And so, uh, yeah, I think he's a little bit more viable too. Yeah, I thought he had a drive uh, to end the first half. I think he scored the layup at the buzzer. Yeah, right. Uh, I thought he had a couple defensive possessions against Paul George that were that were good. And it was just such a good team win. I thought Rick outcoached Ty Lue <laughs> at times, uh, yeah. for sure. Well, and well, Ty Lue was just trying everything on Luca, right? Like <laughs> sometimes yeah. you just outcoach because your player's better. But and yeah. and, th- and that's what it that's what it boils down to. Of like Luca was the best player in in the game today. Oh yeah, and it's it's just wild. I think Rob Mahoney said it. You know, tweeted during the game. I retweeted it, saying like he's never seen a player adjust to the playoffs like this. And like I get it. I get all the success that Luca had overseas and everything, but like this is still a brand new league. This is still to him. This is still a new situation and new stage. And for him, like we, you just have to stop yourself sometimes and that we're seeing this and that we're watching him play at this level in year three, year three, he is like this and he's going like straight at Kawhi and having the success that against these guys, it's just, it's it's unheard of, and if they pull off this series, if they pull it off, well, one, yeah, this um, this podcast would just be unbearable <laughs> for non uh, Mavs fans. So uh, <laughs> it, it's exciting, man. I, I know it's a game one. is a long series to go, but I think Mavs fans, we need to enjoy this. This is exciting, and it shows that this can be a series. Absolutely, absolutely. We will be back on Monday for more. Uh, game one, celebrate it. These wins don't come very often, right? Like, it's hard for teams to get even get in the playoffs sometimes. So celebrate the yeah, win. Yeah, what are the Kings celebrating right now? Enjoy it. Why do we got to throw the Kings out of the bus? Uh, <laughs> what are the Clippers celebrating right now? We'll, we'll talk more on Monday. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.